like so that we can create a system that fits. You know, the, as far as our, my experience, I explored the, the states to promote universal basic income. We all still under citizen, between citizen, the society level, and none of the one of or the rich state level. So I, I want to know how much hard work you have been done, you had you had been doing behind the clothes bef before this is present to state. Share with us your hard work. Uh, you know, it, it's been a lot of work. Oh, yeah. yeah, I believe so. Um, and not only in in putting the the resolution together itself, but really in doing a lot of education because this conversation about a basic income and where our economy is going hasn't been had in this country in a generation. It was in the early 1970s, the last time that um, our federal government had looked at legislation that would provide some sort of meaningful income, which at the time was um, the equivalent, I think, of about $10,000 today. But since then, we haven't had that discussion. And even now, as the uh, you know, media comes in and tries to do stories about it, you see that there's a lot of um, misunderstanding in some cases uh, or assumptions being made. And that's something that's difficult, but at the same time it's an opportunity because we get to define what our values and priorities are that need to be met mm -hmm. and therefore what these mechanisms could look like and should look like going forward. So I think we're in a great spot. You know, I think right now in the United States um, about 51% of all millennials uh, believe that the purest form of capitalism on which our economy is run is no longer the best fit moving forward. 54% of all millennials believe the American dream um, as we knew it growing up and as our parents knew it no longer works and, and is dead for them unfortunately. But I think this is an opportunity to redefine what that dream really is. It's no longer to seek out the best job that pays the most uh -huh. but it is rather I think now to find the job that provides the best meaning and quality of life for someone. And it's our job, I think, in the meantime, to come up with a mechanism or a series of mechanisms that empowers people to be able to have that opportunity in the face of a changing economy. Yeah, uh, we would like to know uh, which political party you are. <clears throat> yeah, because, well, I'm an American citizen myself. But I don't stand in any political party, yeah. so I really want to know. So, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a member of the Democratic Party, but the great thing about this issue is that, um, well, people who, are, uh, who don't have an education in this and don't have the background often, I think, try to fit this new idea for them into mm -hmm. um, either a Republican box or a Democrat box or conservative or liberal or whatever it is, but this is much bigger than that, yeah. which is why I think you see a lot of um, conservative groups and even um, economists like Milton Friedman step up and say, you know what, this is a good idea, just as you see uh, uh, more liberal democratic um, equivalents like Robert Reich and others step forward. And I think that's what's different about this conversation in this time than it's ever been before, is that it is not ideological, it is not partisan, but it is fundamentally a question of humanity and what our future is going to look like. And that's something I think everybody wants to be at the table at to discuss. Yeah. You said, uh, um, <laughs> I tried, young age and uh, 30, 40, 50, or uh, 60, or uh, over 64, or something. What age people is uh, um, most serious about uh, not enough social security in Hawaii um, and uh, who need basic income in yeah. Hawaii yeah I think uh, often here in Hawaii you see people who want to retire but have to keep working because it's so expensive a cost of living mm -hmm. and that's something that is felt I think by all generations but what we're really seeing especially with um, folks my age and younger, millennials, is that we're forced to live with our parents, no matter how good a job you have, doctor, lawyer, uh, because the cost of living is so expensive. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I think Social Security and existing uh, safety net programs can't cover that difference. And inevitably, as more and more people 
um, end up unemployed due to automation or are unable to make ends meet, uh, we're going to see the amount of money the government has to spend on uh, unemployment, on um, welfare, food stamps, housing assistance, um, begin to skyrocket. Yeah. Which is why I think from a political perspective, uh, providing a basic income as a meaning of uh, safety it could be cheaper in the long run for taxpayers yeah. than letting our current system be overwhelmed by the unemployment that automation and innovation uh, will ultimately create. So it's in our financial interest as well as our social interest and the interest of our kids to take action today to start that process to identify a better way forward.